Hello everyone, welcome to my lecture on 8051 microcontroller. Let me introduce myself. I am Roshni Alex, Assistant Professor, Department of Electronics, MES College, Marambali. You may all know about the embedded systems. A microcontroller is an integral part of the embedded system where it controls the outputs according to the input. Let me discuss the 8051 microcontroller which is a basic one. In this lecture, I will be discussing about the 8051 microcontroller which is a basic one. So these are the contents of my lecture. Let me discuss the difference between a microcontroller and a microprocessor. Microcontrollers for embedded systems. Introduction to 8051 microcontroller. Its block diagram, pin diagram and internal architecture. Moving on to the first topic, microprocessor versus microcontroller. These are the block diagrams of a microprocessor and a microcontroller. In a microprocessor, only CPU is standalone and the memory and peripherals are separate. Whereas in microcontroller, they all are integrated into a single chip. So these are the differences between a microprocessor and microcontroller. As we said, in a microprocessor, only CPU is standalone, RAM, ROM, input output and timer are separate. But in the case of a microcontroller, all these are integrated on a single chip. For a microprocessor, the designer can decide on the amount of ROM, RAM and input output ports. But in the case of microcontroller, all these are fixed. That is. It has a fixed amount of on-chip ROM, RAM and input-output ports. The microprocessors are expansive, versatile and general purpose. But for a microcontroller, it is used for single purpose applications in which cost, power and space are critical. Microcontrollers for embedded systems. Embedded system means the processor is embedded into that application. An embedded product uses a microprocessor or a microcontroller to do one task only. In an embedded system, there is only one application software that is typically burned into ROM. For example, a printer. In a printer, the processor inside it does only one task, getting the data and printing it. There are more examples on embedded systems. For home use, we have home appliances, intercom, security systems, camera, remote controls, cellular phones, video games, toys, etc. And for office use, we have telephones, security systems, fax machines, printers, copiers, etc. In an automobile industry, they use engine control, airbag deployment, anti-braking system, keyless entry, instrumentation, etc. using this embedded systems. Now let's go into the details of 8051 microcontroller. In 1981, Intel Corporation introduced an 8-bit microcontroller called the 8051 microcontroller. It is a 40-pin IC with 5 volt supply. It needs 1 to 16 megahertz frequency of clock and it has Harvard architecture. The features of 8051 core are, it is a general purpose microcontroller with an 8-bit CPU optimized for control applications. It has extensive Boolean processing capabilities. It also has 4 kilobytes of on-chip program memory, 128 bytes of on-chip data RAM, 4 8-bit bidirectional and individually addressable input-output ports, 2 16-bit timers. It can also act as counters, full duplex UART, UART means universal asynchronous receiver transmitter, 5 interrupts, and on-chip clock oscillators. This is the block diagram of 8051 microcontroller. It has a CPU interrupt control unit to handle the external interrupts as well as the internal interrupts. On-chip ROM 
for the program called on chip ram to store data two timers timer 0 and timer 1 then the serial port for input output ports bus control units and on chip oscillator this is the pin diagram of 8051 microcontroller it is a 40 pin ic 40th pin is vcc and 20th pin is ground we have four ports with some alternate functions reset pin xtl1 and two pins for connecting the crystal oscillator external axis ale pse and pins to communicate with the external memory oscillator and clock pins crystal 1 and crystal 2 are provided for connecting the oscillator normally we use quartz crystal as the oscillator its frequency is between 1 to 16 megahertz typically we use 12 megahertz clock for the 8051 microcontroller what is the use of this clock frequency the clock frequency can be used for refreshing the dynamic memory setting the board rate in serial data communication and also calculating the time to execute a particular instruction now coming to the memory organization it has internal ROM for storing the program code the size is of 4 kilobytes internal RAM of 128 bytes to store the data and has a facility to add external program and data memory of up to 64 kilobytes using suitable circuits internal ROM it is also called program or code memory the size is 4 kilobytes the address is from 0000H to 0FFFH it is used for storing the program and data like lookup tables it can be internal or external or a combination of both internal RAM or data memory this shows the figure of internal RAM the address location 00 to 7F shows the uh, internal RAM which can be accessed by the user and the address locations from 80 to FF are used as the special function registers registers there are two types of registers general purpose registers and special function registers general purpose registers four banks of eight registers 32 working registers is grouped into eight and arranged in four banks each register is addressed by its name r0 to r7 or by the RAM address 00H to 1FH. RS1 and RS0 of program status word is used to select the banks. Register banks not selected can be used as general purpose RAM. By default, bank 0 is always selected. Bit addressable area. The size is 16 bytes and the address is from 20H to 2FH. An addressable bit may be specified by its bit address of 00H to 7FH or 8 bytes may, be, may form any byte address from 20H to 2FH. Now the general purpose RAM area, 80 bytes, the address starts from 30H to 7FH. These are addressable as bytes. Now the special function registers. Registers appear in internal, internal memory space, working registers port data registers, peripheral control registers. The address is from 80H to FFH. These are placed above the internal data memory. So this shows the special function registers. It consists of the accumulator, B register and all other special function registers that can be used to control the peripherals. Program counter. It is a 16-bit register holds the address of a byte in memory. By definition, a program counter points to the address of the next instruction to be fetched. Program counter is automatically incremented after every instruction byte is fetched. It is not user accessible and it can be altered by certain instructions like jump, call, return, etc. Data pointer is made up of two registers DPH and DPL of 8 bits each. It is used to furnish memory address for internal and external code access and external data access. Data pointer does not have a single address, but data pointer high, the address is 83, and data pointer low with address 82. Accumulator and B register. 8051 has 32 general purpose registers, 32 registers in the banks, and accumulator and B register in the special function register area. 
Accumulator is used for arithmetic and logical operations and Boolean bit manipulations. It is also used for data transfer between 8051 and external memory. A and B registers hold the results of many instructions. B register is used with accumulator for multiplication and division operations. Program status word. PSW contains the math flags, user flag F0 and the register select bits RS0 and RS1 used for selecting the general purpose register banks. The figure shows the flag register. CY flag or carry flag is set when there is a carry after an arithmetic operation. AC is the auxiliary carry flag. It is set when there is a carry at D3 bit and passed on to D4 bit in an arithmetic or logical operation. F0 is the user defined flag. RS1 and RS0 are bank select bits. If these bits are 00, 0 then bank 0 is selected. For 0, 01, bank 1 is selected. 10 bank 2 is selected and for 11 bank 3 is selected. OV is the overflow flag. If there is an overflow of a result greater than FF, this flag will be set. Bit 1 is used for reserve, it is reserved for future use and P is the parity bit, is set when there is an even number of parity. Stack and stack pointer. Stack refers to an area of internal RAM to store and retrieve data during the program execution. Stack pointer is an 8-bit register. It is used to indicate the next memory location in the stack. Bank 1 is used as stack and the bottom of stack is memory location 07H. During a push operation, the stack increments by 1, that is 08H. Input output ports. There are 4 8-bit ports, P0, P1, P2 and P3. They can be used as input and output ports as well as for the alternate purposes. All ports are bit addressable as well as byte addressable. The port structure is, it has a latch, an input buffer and an output buffer. All the ports upon reset are configured as output ports. When the first one is written to a port, it becomes an input. To reconfigure it as an output, a zero must be sent to the port. Alternate functions of the ports. Port zero is also designated as AD0 to AD7, allowing it to be used for holding both address and data of external memory. Port 1 does not have any alternate functions. Port 2 is also designated as A8 to A15, indicating its dual function as the address bus. Port 3 has the additional function of providing some extremely important signals such as interrupts, serial input output, timer bar counter and read write control for external memory. External memory. Two separate external code and data memory spaces of 64 kilobytes can be used. It can be accessed using the 16 bit program counter and data pointer. It is accessed whenever the external access or EA pin is connected to the ground or when the PC contains an address higher than the last address in the 4K internal row. Ports P0 and P2 are used to address the memory locations. Now coming to the peripherals, timers, two 16 bit timers are there, timer 0 and timer 1. They can be used as either timer or as an event counter. Each timer may be programmed to count internal clock pulses. In this way, it acts as a timer or it can be programmed to count external pulses supplied from pin T0 and T1, then it acts as a counter. There are three registers related to the timers, THX and TLX to hold the count, T mode register to set the modes and to select the timer, T count register to control the timer, that is to start and stop the timer. Serial data input output, it is used for serial communication with UART. UART is a universal asynchronous receiver transmitter. Registers used for serial data communication are serial buffer or the SBUF. It is an 8-bit register to hold the data. Serial control register or SCON which controls the data communication. Power control register or PCON 
controls the data rates, timer 1 to set the data rate or board rates, pins txd and rxd to connect the serial data network. So, this is all about 8051 microcontroller. Hope you got a basic idea about the 8051 microcontroller. Thanks for watching.